This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. What's up everyone, today I'll show you how I created a fantasy city floating in the sky among the clouds. I have been intrigued by floating castles and cities like the 80s masterpiece Castle in the Sky by Studio Ghibli. It was always at the back of my mind to create an expansive scene among the clouds, and the recent trigger was an old installation of the Bioshock Infinite that I found on my PC. I think this game launched some 7 years ago and I so enjoyed it back then. So let's dive into the concept, or should I say let's float up with the concept of floating cities. Whatever, let's create. As always, I'll start things with a rough sketch to make it easier when we do the actual composition. This composition took about 8 hours and is by far the quickest among my recent works, so hopefully the speed of the time lapse will be a bit slower than the usual videos. This big shape will form the main floating block of land, the top left corner rock will help in framing, and these are some random floating pieces of rocks. It's always good to overlap elements in the composition that can help it to look exciting and will also help convey the sense of depth. The fainter pieces will be at the back whereas the darker ones will be towards the front. Here I also paid attention to the perspective and made the bottom rock pieces viewed from above whereas the top rock pieces have a viewed from bottom camera angle. There have to be some big masses of clouds to fill up the backdrop. And some fading shapes will add a sense of scale and some activity in the composition. Uh, don't worry about the shape over here, it's kinda messed up, but it'll look right when I do the actual composition. With the sketch more or less done, let's start with creating our main landmass. Before putting the textures, I blocked up the main shape and will add the images as a clipping mask on top of it. That way I can move and transform and do whatever I want and they will not go out of bounds. You can also put them in a group and add a mask to that group, but I find this more convenient. I use a grungy brush to create some rough blending and I also used free transform to stretch and make a tapering look. I paid attention to the direction of light and placed textures so that the light appeared to be coming from the left. That way I don't have to work too much on them later. Once satisfied, I started placing some images of castles and blended them in. But I didn't like it how it turned out, so I replaced it with this fantasy city 3D asset that I downloaded from Envato Elements. At the same time, I took a different image to create the top portion of the floating island. So you can see how different stock images play a crucial role in the composition. And a great place to get quality stock assets is Envato Elements, who is also the sponsor of this video. With more than 50 million assets, Envato Elements is the perfect one-stop shop for all your creative needs. Not only you get quality stock photos, but also video templates, motion graphics, stock videos and beautiful royalty-free music for your video production. I am personally using Envato Elements for the last year and you have been seeing the video templates and the motion graphic elements in my videos as well. Along with it, you get a wide array of graphic templates, fonts and add-ons for your graphic designing work. Also, you get to access presentation and web templates for your business needs. Now, teaming up with the high quality stock photos, the massive collection of 3D asset section is a paradise for photo manipulators and digital artists. You can simply search for an item and rotate it at an angle fitting the perspective in your composition and download it. The best part, this is pre cut out, so you don't have to spend hours to separate all these fine details. And the most exciting part, you get unlimited download access and commercial licenses to everything with just a single subscription. And that too for less than $20 a month with their 50% discounted annual plan. That means, instead of paying $33 every month in the monthly plan, you just get to pay $16.50 per month in the annual plan. If you think Envato Elements is for you, you can get your subscription today and unlock unlimited creative assets. I will add the link for you in the description section. Alright then, let's get back to our composition. I kept slicing out and patching the parts of the island image to create my custom made floating island. As there were lots of foliage and rough rock textures, I could easily get away with simply masking elements with a grungy brush. Here also I made sure the stock image lighting aligned with the final lighting of my scene, which is coming from the left. If I got it wrong over here, things can be a real pain later. The rocks around the trees had a strong blue hue, so I removed it using the selective color adjustment layer. I simply went into the cyan and blue channels and dropped the cyan and blue sliders and also brought up the yellow slider. I took the same approach to create the smaller floating rocks, I blocked out shapes using a random color and added the mountain image as a clipping mask. I squeezed the bottom section using free transform to create a tapering look. I quickly created the top section using the same image of the island, but I cut and patched the image at places to create some variation. I quickly blocked out the remaining rocks in the foreground and this time I used the clone stamp tool to create the rock textures. Since these are relatively small shapes, I sampled portions from the main floating rock. 
I just paid attention to sample areas that give that tapering look. I repeated the same thing for the rocks at the back. Don't worry if it doesn't visually differentiate the rocks at the back and the front, it will make sense when I add the atmospheric perspective and depth. Oh uh, well, at this point, they do look like some grass flavored ice cream cones. Interesting. Here I don't want to repeat but I did the top left corner rock piece in the same way as the other floating rock pieces. Next I brought in this image of the clouds and this will form the base of our backdrop. I squeezed the bottom section to create a cloudy floor and stretched the top part to fill the remaining portion. At the same time I started adding the atmospheric haze using curves. This will immensely help add depth to our scene and separate out different elements. I lifted the bottom left node in the RGB channel to wash out the colors and dropped the top right node to darken them up. I also lifted the curve in the blue channel to add some blue hue and slightly dropped the curve in the red channel to take away the warm tone. The intensity of the haze will be greatest on the furthest away rocks and least on the rocks closer to the viewer. If you want to learn more about this concept, I have a very in-depth video on this topic. I will add the link in the description section. I think you will find it helpful. Then I started spicing up the background by bringing in more clouds. I occasionally used clone stamp and a smoke brush to sample the clouds and extend them in places. I started adding some ambient light in a blank layer set to soft light blending mode, but this won't be that important as I'll be discarding it and will replace it with something else. I dropped some more clouds and masked them using a soft round brush to retain the interesting cloud shapes. I added some haze on the floating rocks in the foreground using the curves as I did with the faraway rocks. Now it's the time to create shadows and highlights and make the shapes more defined. I used curves for the shadows, I dropped the top right node in the RGB channel to darken everything up, at the same time I lifted the curve in the blue channel and dropped it in the red channel to introduce some cool blue hue and remove the warm tone. Then filled the layer mask with black and painted at required areas to reveal the shadows. Shadows kind of don't stay black in these white scenes like these, the ambient light tends to get into it and give it somewhat the color of the sky. For highlights, I simply took another curves and lifted the RGB channel. Then I did the same thing as the shadows layer, I filled the layer mask with black and painted with white on the areas where I needed the highlights. The light is coming from the top left, so I adjusted accordingly. Painting the highlights and shadows correctly will help make the shapes stand out. I gave the same highlights and shadows treatment to the smaller floating rocks. Next, I dropped these cool steampunk airships which I downloaded from Envato Elements. They were 3D assets so I could easily rotate them to fit the correct angle according to the perspective of my scene. Time to add the atmospheric haze on them as well. This time I used a blue-gray solid color fill. I increased the opacity as I went further and vice versa. With that, I used curves to darken up the required airships and add a cool blue hue matching the overall color tone of our scene. I added some parts of the city on the front most floating rock just to break up the repetitive pattern. I used some curves to paint some form shadow on the structure and some more curves to paint some cast shadows. I placed the same 3D asset of the city but at a different angle on the big piece of floating rock at the back. I copied the previous curves that I added on the top city and added to this one but intensified the atmospheric haze effect. Then I worked a bit on the clouds, I used the clone stamp to sample areas and make it look like the clouds are moving past the floating rocks. I used curves again to create a dark bluish color cast and paint some big shadows on the clouds. I simply dropped the top right node in the RGB channel and lifted the same in the blue channel. As I mentioned, shadows will not be black but will reflect somewhat the color of the sky. Once that is done, I took a blank layer in the soft light blending mode and painted some ambient light. This will beautifully help make our scene pop. I painted with some dark blue-gray color on the shadowy areas on the right, whereas on the top left I switched between some cream yellow and peach colors to add a warmer tone. I also let the color bleed into the objects like the rocks and the airships and it will help create a nice bloom effect. I guess you can already see how the image is slowly coming to life. Once I add the final color grading, it would look more polished. I painted some more shadows on the clouds as I felt I missed them previously.
I thought about adding some waterfalls, hoping that it spices things up even more. Now I don't know if they are some divine streams or some sewer drainage from these cities. That is for you to find out. I played with the blend if section to remove the dark areas, also changed the blending mode to screen and added the same color grading with curves to darken them up and add a cool blue hue. Added some extra waterfalls here and there and a big one on the top left corner floating rock base. I felt that the vast open space looked too flat, so I brought in a cloud image, fitted it in place and masked it in specific areas to retain interesting cloud shapes that match our scene. I overlaid a layer in light and blending mode and on the areas with dark patches I painted with some lighter shades. This in turn messed up the tone of the top floating rock piece, so I adjusted the haze and its placement accordingly. Time to paint some highlights and shadows on the airships. It's pretty straightforward, you know it how I do it. I added curves, I dropped the RGB curve to darken up and paint on an inverted layer mask on the right side with white to reveal the shadows. The curves are added as clipping masks so that the shadows don't bleed out. For the highlights I took another curves and lifted the curve in the RGB channel and this time I dropped the curve in the blue channel to introduce some yellows and lifted the same in the red channel to bring in some red and mix them to create an orange hue. And then as before painted on an inverted layer mask with white to reveal the highlights. Here I painted some red hot exhausts. I just put a layer in color dodge blending mode and painted with some orange red color. I painted some smoke trails as well. I used the smudge tool to wiggle them a bit. Since the corner piece of rock is very close to the viewer, I painted some hanging roots and debris. Now is the time for some overall color grading. I duplicated the soft light ambient light layer I painted previously but reduced the opacity a bit. Then I added a curves adjustment layer, I lifted the blacks but darkened the shadows, I also boosted the highlights a bit. I added a drop loose color lookup table, set its blending mode to color and reduced the opacity to around 15%. Then I added a crisp warm color lookup table, changed the blending mode to color and reduced the opacity to 70%. On top of that, I added a Kodak 5218, Kodak 2383 color lookup table and changed the blending mode to color as well. Next I added some grain, on a plank layer I clicked shift F5 and filled it with 50% grey, then added some noise using filter, noise, add noise and added a 25% monochromatic noise and blurred it using 0.5 pixels Gaussian blur. Then changed the blending mode to soft light and reduced the opacity to around 25%. Towards the end I added some birds. I used channel separation method to mask them out. I added a channel mixer on top of a duplicated birds layer. Then tweak the sliders so that the sky is close to white and the birds are close to black. Then I selected the black pixels and used it as a layer mask. I also fine tuned areas manually as needed. I desaturated and inverted to make the birds white so that they stand out on the background. I took another image of the birds and used the same channel separation method but this time I went into the channels tab and duplicated the channel having the greatest contrast. Used levels to intensify the contrast and selected the black pixels to add as a mask fine-tuned manually wherever needed. I tweaked the flock of birds to space them out a bit. At the end, I added some more contrast by painting a bit on a new soft light layer as before. And I added a couple of differently styled airships to add some variations. On top of everything, I added a prismatic light leak and warped it to create a rainbow-like effect. So here goes the final result of my Sky City Photoshop composition. Do let me know in the comments if this video helped you in any way. If it did, please like and share the video with your friends. And if you like my overall content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That would greatly motivate me to create more videos like this. Well then, I will see you in the next video and till then, enjoy creating.